So not too long ago, I was on a podcast. And after this podcast had aired, I had an email from a listener that wanted to jump on a call with me to see if I could help him grow his podcast. Well, fast forward six months and that client actually, or that person turned into a client and they spent over $50,000 with us. Now this was one podcast interview and obviously not every podcast interview turns into a five figure sale, but in reviewing all of that, all what happened, um, I wanted to share with you a video around the three things that I think really, really were key factors in getting this client and also picking the right podcast to be a guest on. So we're going to dive into that today, exactly what I learned and the three key things to think about when you're getting on podcasts to grow your business. Let's dive in. Welcome back to how to get your first 100,000 podcast listeners. I'm Luis Diaz, your host and if you're new here, this show is for you if you are an online business owner, an entrepreneur, an online personality who wants to know what works with launching, growing, monetizing podcasts. I'm super fortunate to have you know 50 plus podcast clients, so I'm really, really lucky to have access to all of these accounts and you can see what's working, what's not, and I can share that with you guys. So today we're going to talk about what I learned personally from closing a $50,000 client from another podcast. This was not my own show. This was not this show. I was actually a guest on another show. Basically had one email, one person reach out and that turned into a big, pretty decent sized sale. So I am going to walk through today exactly what that looks like, why that happened. And some of the things I think really, really are important for you to pay attention to when you get on other podcasts. All right. So this is kind of just from personal insights um, from my own account of getting on other podcasts. So let's dive in. Number one, a lot of times when we're on another podcast, we kind of forget that the listener is not sitting in front of their computer waiting on Google to type in your name and find your website. We have to remember that they are running, maybe they're in traffic, maybe they're picking up their kids, maybe they're at home, maybe they're doing work. Um, they're probably multitasking. They're probably not sitting on the edge of the seat waiting for you to tell them where to go to find out more about you. So we need to make it super simple for them to find you afterwards, okay? A lot of different ways we can do that. Personally, for me, what I found is I do two things. I give people access to a free thing, right? That could be a Facebook community. That could be free videos. I used to give away my book. I give them a free thing, one place to go and connect with me or, or get the thing that I talked about. The second thing that I'll give them is personal access. So I give them either my email or I say, hey, shoot me a message on Instagram and I'd love to connect with you. And I've actually had this happen, this workouts where I've made, I've made good friends through some of the podcasts I've been on because the guests or the listeners reach out to me. Two things there, again, make it super easy for them. Don't give them a bunch. I give them two maximum. So a personal one, like if you want to reach to me, reach me directly, go here. And then I give them more of like, here's a free opt-in thing that you can you can use, right? So like a free course giveaway, you, you name it, template, swipe, whatever. Kind of a hybrid idea is if you have a some kind of really cool thing, maybe you talked about a script, an email script, and you don't have like a fancy landing page set up for it yet, you can just say, hey, email me and let them know, let me know that you listened to this episode and I will give it to you for free. That allows you to get people to respond to you, but it doesn't require you to have to go and build a, an email automation and a landing page and a, you know, all that stuff. So that's an easy way to kind of do both and make it a hybrid, hybrid approach. But remember, number one is make it easy for them to find you. Okay. So don't give them a complicated website. Don't give them multiple places to go and find you. Those things will kill you and they will not make it easy for the listener who's probably halfway, half paying attention to go and find you. So that's number one, make it super easy. Number two is about stories. So whenever you go on a podcast, uh, the way people remember you is likely not going to be from your name, even though it's probably going to be like in the title of the episode, they're probably not going to remember your name, right? Especially if you have, if you have a complicated name. So they are going to remember you though, by the stories you tell. Okay. So the stories you tell are super important and that's obvious because humans learn through stories, right? Like we learn, you know, we learn best through stories. It's been proven. So that idea is really true when you get on podcasts. So you want to have stories about a couple of things. There's three things you should have stories about, especially if you're a coach, consultant, entrepreneur, agency owner. If you are somebody in the space who is looking to, you know, get on podcasts to get clients or get more, build a personal brand and a following, the stories you tell 
will go further than just your name. Three things, like I mentioned, three things that you want to make sure you have stories on. Number one, don't have stories about you uh, and your come up. Maybe you have a really epic story about when you got started in the industry or a huge failure that people will really resonate with early on, or maybe some about your childhood. Having stories about that, super important. They're going to ask you about it a lot of times on a podcast. Number two, you're going to want to have stories about your clients. So you're going to want to have like one to two stories about how you helped the client go from here to there, right? And what were the trials and tribulations and uh, big things that you helped them over cheat, overcome? And then number three, you want to have stories about your own success and failure. So a lot of times when I go on podcasts, I talk about how my first podcast failed miserably and um, how like after 14 episodes, I just threw in the towel because it was just too damn, too damn hard. And then I talk about how I you know, succeeded through um, you know, studying other successful podcasters, right? So that's another story. Now, I mentioned, you know, stories about your come up and stories about success and failure. Those can kind of be the same sometimes, right? Or sometimes they are different. Take it for whatever you want, but have stories about your come up, have stories about your own success and failure, have stories about your clients. Those are probably the three main ways that you, or stories you want to kind of have ready to go, almost memorize them pretty much. Like you want to have a certain flow and be able to deliver them really, really comfortably. Uh, to make sure people actually pay attention, they resonate with you. And it's a good idea, it's a good practice to talk to the host and say, hey, what story is you want me to tell? You know, what is it that your audience is interested in? Should I tell them a story about how I generated blah, blah, blah? And they'll say yes or no, right? So they'll probably be able to direct you a little bit more if you ask them ahead of time. And I remember for me, one of the things that I talked about on this on this um, podcast when I we generated this 50 grand from this client was um, around all the tests and different paid strategies that we were doing for the podcasting and that piqued his interest, right? So that was really, really important to um, to mention. Then the third and probably the most important, well, definitely the most important thing here around landing clients with other podcasts is to pick the right shows. I can't tell you how many times I've been on shows and podcasts that were big that I didn't get any any traction from. I didn't get any followers, any clients, any email opt-ins, nothing. And the reason for that is because it's the wrong audience. It's not so much about the size of the audience, all right? You probably heard that before, right? It's not the size that matters. It is mostly around the quality of the audience or the the person, people who are listening. So if you have, obviously, as a random example, if you have a show that has 20 of your ideal clients listening, it's going to be better than the show going, going on the show that has 200,000 of the completely wrong type of people that you want to attract, okay? So I've been on small shows and I've generated leads, generated sales. Um, this show that I was actually on in particular was not that big of a show. I knew their numbers and they were not that big at all. But they talked to the right person and the ideal person who had the right money, who had um, an interest in what I did and who was in the market at the time for what I offered, right? So that's the most important thing. Um, some tips around doing this really, really effectively. Number one, I always personally look for podcasts that are complementary to what I do. So I am a podcast um, quote unquote expert, but um, I will look for shows that are uh, focusing on social media, focusing on sales and marketing, focusing on other things that are not specifically podcasting, right? So complementary, not um, not competitive. We want to go for complementary um, items or complementary shows. So shows that talk about podcasting, but the host is obviously not a podcast expert. So I become the expert in that scenario. Really, really, really important. If you're trying to be, if you're a fitness coach or fitness expert, going on other fitness experts podcasts is not going to be uh, very effective because they are the expert in that, in that sandbox. And you coming in being the expert, unless they say he's the expert specifically in hormone optimization, then it's going to be very, very hard to kind of be, to have two experts on the same show. So you want to find complimentary podcasts that where like, the host is not the expert in what you do. All right, it's going to, it's going to be really hard. That's the third most important thing. Um, a couple of websites I will throw out there for you to check out uh, that I've used effectively are listennotes.com, uh, Podchaser, and I'm blanking on the other one, but I will find it. I will put it in the description. So if you're in the on YouTube watching this or, or on the podcast, the link for that third one, which I'm going to have to Google here in a second and figure it out, when I'm uh, what I'm blanking on here, but it'll be in the description or show notes below. So check that out. There's some really helpful places for you to find podcasts that are out there potentially looking for guests like you. That was it. Those are the three biggest things that when reflecting, those are the biggest things that helped me turn this listener. Well, I didn't know it was even alive in existence to a paying client for my business.
Hope that was helpful. I'll see you next time. If you like this content, subscribe, leave me questions. I will make a video based on the questions you ask if they are relevant, obviously, to the content we talk about here. See you later. Have an awesome day.